you are covering a hand clinic. A patient of 20 years old has been referred. He had a hyperextension wrist injury during football match. Radiographs were taken. The diagnosis of sprain had was splinted for two weeks. Now he's two weeks down the line after this injury. At the history, patient complains of pain at the base of the thumb and locates pain at the region of the staff box. There is minimal swelling noted. Range of motion is reduced as compared to the opposite side. There is point tenderness over the proximal aspect of the scaphoid. Further assessment shows no carpal or wrist instability. Shock test evaluates lunotraquetrum, scaphoid shift test for scapular instability, development test for the distal radioulnar joints are all negative. The previous x-rays as per an on the SPAC system shows no fracture. A repeat PA view of the wrist with the forearm in neutral position, a lateral projection of the wrist and the oblique view with the forearm in 35 degree consopination this time identifies a proximal pole fracture. Scaphoid are most commonly fractured carpal bones, about 80% of the total and the wrist, and the second most common after distal radius fractures. The typical patient is young after a fall with extended wrist. Diagnosis of fracture is suggested by the patient age, mechanism of injury and symptoms. Radiographs are required to confirm diagnosis. Scaphoid bone is anatomically. First, its blood supplies from the superficial palmar arch of the radial artery and the dorsal carpal branch of the radial artery runs from distal to proximal with a proximal pole receiving the most tenuous blood supply. Thus, proximal pole is particularly susceptible for AVN as a complication of a fracture. Second, its irregular three-dimensional shape presents a special problem in diagnosis of acute fracture and their treatment. It is intra-articular bone with 80% of its surface covered with articular cartilage. The space fracture results in early degenerative arthritis and malunion can lead to carpal collapse. Scaphoid is most commonly fractured across the middle third, with 70% of the fractures occurring at the waist. 10% are distal third fractures and 20% are proximal pole fractures. All proximal pole fractures should be considered unstable regardless of the radiological appearance. Thus, classified classified fracture into three categories based on the radi fracture axis. One, horizontal oblique. Two, transverse. And three, vertical oblique. Horizontal oblique and transverse fractures together comprise 95% of fractures and respond equally well to therapy. Vertical oblique comprise remaining 5% and tend to have slower progress to union and high rate of non-union. The optimal treatment of scaphoid fracture depends on the diagnosis of a fracture acutely and correct classification of the injury. CT greatly assist in classifying the injury and assist the displacement and angulation. CT are most commonly used to determine fracture non-union. The herbal classification system for scaphoid fracture uses radiographic appearance to determine surgery versus non-surgical management. Non-surgical management is reserved for Herbert A type fractures. Regarding the Herbert classification, they are divided into A and B. Type A fracture are acute, stable fractures and conservative treatment is possible. B are acute, unstable fracture and surgical treatment is required. C is a classification which is no longer used, include delay union, and now it's part of type D. Type D are all non-unions older than six weeks. Type E are further divided into A1 and A2. A1 is fracture of the tubercle and A2 is incomplete fracture through the waist. The B are classified into four different forms. B1 is distal pole, oblique fracture, 
B2 is complete fracture of the paste, B3 is proximal pole fracture, and B4 is transcaphoid palinate fracture dislocation of the carpal. You decide to have a surgical management for a proximal pole fracture. A contralateral radiograph is always helpful to determine the screw length. A CT scan confirms proximal pole fractures being non displaced. You again see the same patient after seven weeks and decide for going on for operative management as you don't see any progress as per the CT. The waist, the wrist is flexed to 90 degree with the forearm pronated until the scaphoid was viewed down in long axis as a ring of cortical bone. In the center of the ring, a 0 0.045 inch K wire was driven from proximal to distal exiting at the base of the thumb. From the base of the thumb, the wire was withdrawn to a point that the wire can again be extended to a neutral, wrist can be extended again to the neutral. The hand and forearm were accentuated and tourniquet was used to maintain a breadless feel. The finger was placed in a finger trap and longitudinal traction is applied. The scaphoid fracture was visualized orthoscopically through a mid-carpal row. A mini fluoroscopy unit placed in the horizontal plane and around the wrist was used to locate the entry port. A 19 kg needle was used to locate the joint space above the scaphoid and lunate and between the scaphoid and capitate. The skin was longitudinal in size at the site identified by the 319 kg needle. Care was taken to incise only the skin and not the underlying tissue as dorsal sensory nerves can cross through the area of the portals. Then dissection to the level of the joint caps was performed with a small hemostat and then a hemostat was used to carefully spread the joint capsule and enter the joint. A 2.8 mm cannula with a blunt trucar was used to enter the joint. The trucar was removed and the 2.3 mm 30 degree angled scope was placed through the cannula. The inflow was then hooked up to the arthroscope cannula. A second portal was established in the same manner using a 19 gauge needle as a guide. The second port portal is now used for instrument placement. The fracture was then visualized. Both the arthroscope and traction were removed and the wrist was flexed to 90 degrees. Minus of fluoroscopy confirmed that the scaphoid was reduced. A minus fluoroscope unit was used to confirm the position of the guide wire and architectural alignment of the scaphoid. The arthroscope were reinserted to confirm articular fracture alignment. If the fracture was still displaced, we would have withdrawn the guide wire into the distal pole of the scaphoid and inserted a 0 0.062 inch K wire placed perfectly to be used as a joystick to reduce the fracture. A guide wire was then driven back to secure both fracture fragments. Reduction is then confirmed arthroscopically. The wrist was removed from traction and flexed to 9 degree and the K-wire was driven proximally. The scaphoid was prepared for screw placement using a cannulated hand tap dorsally. The cannulated screw was placed dorsally with a cannulated driver. Skin incision was closed with nylon sutures. post -operative, Proximal port fractures are managed differently from waist fractures because of the possible difficulty in maintaining fixation of small fragments. A protective thumb spica is applied for four weeks. Rehabilitation begins at four weeks. Serial radiograph and CT scans begin at six weeks, evaluating the course of healing and the fracture alignment. The sprint is discontinued when the patient is pain free and tender, non tender, and the CD documented bridging bone across the fracture site is important. While talking about the modality of treatment, it's important to talk about herbal screw. Especially designed for scaphoid fracture, herbal screws are distinguished by their headless design. Calibrated insertion jig and threads 
at both ends of the skull. The threads engage both fracture fragments and allow for compression by the fact that the threads are of different pitch. However, the more common complaints of the difficulty in use, particularly in applying the jig properly. Poor compression provided by the screw and difficult placement in proximal pole fractures. For fracture of the distal two-third of the scaphoid, a water approach is used with placement of the screw aided by a specially designed jig. For fracture of the proximal third, a dorsal approach is the best, with retrograde placement of the screw in a freehand fashion. A verification of jig placement with the image intensifier before screw insertion prevents malplacement. Prolonged post-operative immobilization is not necessary in post-op cases. Use a firm padded bandage to provide wrist support and protection for further two weeks. At this time, remove the sutures and begin a program of active rehabilitation. Award regarding bone graft. Bone graft is generally reserved for established non-unions. However, they are appropriate for primary treatment of delayed presented scaphoid fracture. The usual site of gra graft is from the iliac crust with a graft shaped appropriately to fill that effect in the scaphoid. In case of still unstable fracture, herbs from K wire maintain reduction of the fracture. So.